Hey folks, welcome to the Wolf Den, one more time. I'm going to show you something that I promised. I always follow up when I say a video is coming, a video is coming. And see, I don't know, I... I believe there's a lot of people that of course see my videos and they're not knowing the backstory. So the best thing you can do is subscribe. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can bookmark my fishing reports page and go to my Facebook page even. I'm not a big Facebook guy, but then again, I do the Twitter thing too. Every report, and video automatically gets shot over to Twitter also. So I'll put all those links below in the video description. And that's a big deal too. Do you know people don't even know what the video description is and where it is? And I use my own family as a test market. And there's so many people that are watching on phones and tablets and stuff and they're not they don't even know all they know is oh, they're watching the video below every video is going to be a few lines of verbiage and then it says show more you click on that and it opens up and that's where people like myself and other people who do videos on YouTube, add links, we add um, some description of what the video is all about, and I can tell that about, eh, let's say 99.9% .9 of everybody that watches my videos never ever read the video description, and there's a lot of information in that video description. So maybe that's how you can get, if a video has a backstory to it, that's how you can kind of be informed. And all you have to do is when everybody says, and I watch this on so many videos, everybody says, check out the video description below and they put their finger down. It's because right below the video, there's going to be a line of some words you know that somebody wrote and then it says show more click on that and you'll see the video description i wish people did read the video descriptions more often because they wouldn't be asking such wacky questions so the backstory to this video is the fact that i am not carrying coolers on my boat the jetty wolf any longer and the reason being and when I say coolers I mean hard coolers I had an 80 angle a 35 angle a six uh, what a 265 angles okay and throughout the year I'd be carrying anywhere from two to three coolers on the deck because my boat the Jetty Wolf has a completely sealed deck being that it's a welded commercial grade aluminum boat they don't put any way any anything in the deck because below the deck is the gas tank and it's all foam filled okay that's the reason my boat is like very quiet from the bow to the stern in my boat it's all one piece it's not there's no hatches or anything. So everything that I put on the boat sits on the deck. Well, I got to thinking one day, and this is right after I did the backstory video of how I bought some Yeti Hopper 40 soft-sided coolers. And one of them was going to be designated as a fish bag. All right. And the neat thing about a fish bag is, and I described it in that video, and I will add that video in the 
video description as a link. Or maybe I'll put it up here on the card. That round button with the eye in it. Maybe I'll put it right there because you can click on that and it'll open it'll open up with some information and you can go to that video where I use Yeti hoppers on my boat. Well I've got three of those and they've been working out really well because of the fact that I throw a 10, 20 pound bag of ice in them, drinks, sandwiches, everything, easily moved around, and they keep everything monster cold. Monster cold. Oh, actually to quote like a guy the other day that went dipping his hand down there and grabbed one of the last drinks and came up and he went, oh my God, my hand's frozen. Because you get that slurry of ice and water in there, oh my God. And the reason I got rid of the hard coolers is because I looked at it and I said to myself and I looked it up on their website and everything. Went to Ingle's website and this is nothing against Ingle coolers and nothing against any hard, hard cooler. And I started thinking, man, I'm carrying like 125, 150 pounds, which is another person just in cooler weight empty. So then you look at like a Yeti hopper, okay, takes up real minimal space. And then what's it dry without anything in it? Four pounds. Okay. So I got on this kick where I don't want hard coolers. I keep one small little hard cooler about this big on the boat. And that's also going to be, um, that's my live well for live shrimp to keep to have them in a really insulated cooler and then I customized the cooler and I made a bracket and everything and I'll probably show that later on when I get into that season where I made a cooler live well with a bracket hanging off the side and everything that holds my aerator and then I got a little tiny ammo box and then there goes my small battery that'll run that aerator all day long for eight, eight solid hours. So instead of my live well, I got a live well about this big. I got to keep a live live well, 14 gallon. If I'm not doing fin fish, mullet, pogies, whatever, and I'm just fishing live shrimp, well, there's another obstruction off the deck that I can get rid of. Because I got basically, you know, decent seating just on the side of my boat. And we never make any long boat runs. So you're not, you're not needing a beanbag chair to sit in the back and fall asleep and then wake up and then you're finally going to be fishing. My runs where I'm going is two minutes over here, four minutes over there, five minutes here. If I make a 10, 15 minute run, whoo, man, are we going far from the dock. So I don't need, I, I find that I really don't need all that. Okay, so I'm on the soft, soft cooler kick, and it all started with the Yeti hoppers, and I got an extra one. I got three total. I know what you're saying. Good God, what's that, $1,200 or something? No, not really, because you work deals. You get deals, you get yourself the best deal you can, and I do that off of eBay. We're putting food and drinks in two of them, of two of the hoppers, and I thought, well, this third one will be a nice fish bag. For trout and redfish or, you know, redfish. Then I got to thinking, well, you know, even the Yeti Hopper 40 is not really big enough to probably two, three decent sized black drum in. Because black drum is some of my favorite fishing. I love black drum. I love catching them. And we do that in the winter and the spring. Okay here in Northeast Florida. Oh, by the way, I know people are even watching this. They don't know. I do fishing charters. Some people I think are thinking they're watching a, a fishing store video. I kind of have that because I have, I have some comments in some of my videos that I don't know what people are thinking. I'm in the fishing charter business and have been for the last 21 years. Okay. So everything I'm doing is about what I'm doing for my boat and my customers and on my charters. Let's just get that out of the way. 
So, when it all boils down to it, I wanted something that maybe I could put some bigger fish in. Some big black drum. Eight, nine pounders, at least, because they're the good eaters. Anything from four or five pounds up to eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pounds are, de are good eating fish. And I love fishing for them. And I said, well, you know, I got a kingfish. I need to, I guess I need to turn the phone off when I'm doing videos, huh? <laughs> because I have a kingfish bag for king mackerel. That's for tournament fishing. I mean, that thing's six foot long, and yes, I've used it, but it's too big and clumsy, and it's got too much space in it, actually, because the confined space and keeping that ice around your fish is what's going to keep them cold. So, I went online and I started looking really hard at smaller fish bags. And none of them really had the attributes that I was looking for until I started going through on YouTube and I found videos of in Australia of a guy who was having his own fish bags built. And his company was Blue Bottle Fishing. Well, I ended up going to their website after seeing even another video. And I really, really liked what this guy had. He had a, a micro, a mini, a maxi, or no, um, maxi, no, a midi, and a maxi. So he had four different sizes. And the attributes of his fish bags sold me. And guess what? Here's one. Here it is. And I'm going to turn the camera down here a little bit so you can see it. So, here is the, the bag from Blue Bottle Fishing. Okay. It's about a yard wide. So long. And it sort of has a flat bottom. All electro, uh, what do you call it, thermo seals, okay, not stitched, but they call that, I don't know, when they use heat or sound or something to um, join plastics together, all right, and this is the mini. There is one smaller nest, which is about maybe about this size. But I figured this, for an inshore fisherman like myself, could I could stuff several, you know, good-sized black drum in here. This would end up working out for me. And it's sto I can store it in my console. I've got a big box in my console that's a storage box. And this would work out. Real high quality. Zipper. That's the number one thing. The high quality zipper. Okay. And he said that's even a waterproof zipper, so like the Yeti, you turn it over, it's not going to be pouring out. So the way they're, they make this was really appealing to me, because it's got this flat bottom, and this is exactly how it would lay on the boat. It would lay upright like this, not just like folded, you know, laying down. It would actually sit like this with ice in it, okay? It's got all different kinds of... Uh, carrying straps here okay and one of the things that I really liked is they give you a very high quality drain and you can drain the bag and then they even give you this which has one of those quick connect hose ends on it I don't know what I really can't figure out how what I what I would use this for but then you can attach a hose to this by screwing that in there. Okay. So let's say maybe maybe you got this bag sitting and you want to put a little hose on it so it just drains naturally. Well then that's when you would use this, this white piece. So I just got this all the way from Australia from BlueBottleFishing.com. I got on Facebook and I talked to the owners and he said go to my website which I've already I was already at their web at his website wonderful website 
you don't have to worry about, oh, is this in Australian dollars or, you know, in American dollars or French francs. It, like, senses where you're from, right, when you go to the website, and everything's in U.S. dollars. I had this express Australian ship to me, and I think it cost an extra 40 bucks. But the entire thing, it's still coming down in the wash here. I'll, I'll know more of the conversion rate between the United States dollars and Australian dollars. Maybe about 150 bucks or so with the shipping. Okay. And yeah, you can get a real cheapy little fish bag for about 100 in the United States, but it doesn't have these qualities. Um, this, you just fold this on in, right? And let's see, you can fold it up, right? And then, where is it? <coughs> Take it and you bring this around and there you go. Kind of folds it up. I think you could probably even fold it one more time, but there's no need to. Not that I have. But that's what that is for. Uh, one thing that I always got mad about in on certain things is people don't show you up close what anything looks like. Okay, there's the zipper. It's, I can tell you right off, that's not cloth on either side of the teeth. That's a, um, a canvassy, waterproof canvas like this. I like how they really secure these ends. Okay, so then you open it up. And the inside is just like the outside. Same sort of material, about a half inch thick or so insulation. Okay, you're not, you know, you're not using this to go up to Canada or something and live for three weeks. Um, usually just a day is all that I know that I would ever be using it for. And it's in, insulated on the bottom, insulated on the sides, insulated on the end here. It's very, very well made, I have to say. This is very, very well made. Okay. Um, so, besides my Yeti hopper, I would have this in my console. And I can see myself putting two or three black drum in here, no problem. And then using my Yeti hopper for what I planned on using it for. One of them is just a fish bag for my trout and stuff like that trout croakers all your soft fish and i'll just lay um maybe you know 27 inch reds and drum in this and it'll just lay over in the back of the boat or something and um it's really going to work out the thing that i you know i'm into people carrying business so in all reality more stuff on the deck and more space being take up, taken up is something that I don't like. The reason I had my boat built is I've got so much fishing room in it compared to a fiberglass boat uh, of its same size. So I got, as I refer to as the back behind my console, I've got ballroom dancing. I mean, I got huge amounts of room in the stern of my boat. I had it built that way. I moved the console and the leaning post two and a half feet forward. So I own a true center console. Of the boat length, the console's really in the center, not in that back quarter. They do that on most center console boats to give you a better ride. They claim this is the best riding boat in the entire world. But then, of course, they move the console slap up against the transom. So, me, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not making long runs offshore. I got out of that years ago. So my entire, you know, motto is no long boat rides, and that's guaranteed. So this will end up working out for me, and I can store it, have more space on the boat. But the reason I wanted to show it to everybody 
is for the sheer fact you've got a smaller boat and you don't want to carry a cooler just as a you know a fish bag or something see what I'll end up doing is I put a lot of ice in my Yeti hoppers most of the time 10 pounds will work all day but I throw you know a 20 pound bag in it we catch the drum or we catch the big reds I just scoop some of the ice out of my Yeti hoppers and throw it in here to chill out a fish okay and there is that little secret now and I carry that little tub of rock salt throw some rock salt on there and get that ice and that slurry down to like 28 degrees man you're making your fish really cold then you don't necessarily fill this up full of ice and then put a fish in it although you could you could um, the whole idea basically with this is you've got ice you catch a couple decent sized fish you put it in here and you throw some ice on top of them that's basically the idea of this because you're going to pull this out of storage i'll put the links in the description but this is the mini chiller fish bag from blue bottle fishing in australia what's today today is tuesday i think i ordered this maybe last tuesday or wednesday it didn't take long to get here at all australian uh express mail brought it straight from australia right to new york it came in through new york and then i didn't actually expect to get this till tomorrow according to you know the tracking and things like that you'll get the australian express tracking all the way until it hits new york sometimes miami most of the time it's going to be new york it's going to go through the processing then and then from new york to jacksonville florida it was three days so probably three days to get from australia and then maybe three three days to go from new york to here and i love the fact that it's got that love that because then you can kind of drain off some nasty water put more ice in if you have to really works out and then having this little thing this was tethered right on there at first is nothing but an added benefit so that's the story i'll put all the links below in the video description i will put my yeti hopper video in a card and the little round eye that'll be up here in the corner of this video and um, if anybody is interested in a bag like this don't hesitate do not hesitate because coming from Australia is no big deal no big deal at all and I love how this bag sits upright like that it's not laying over it's just how they made this design this triangular design is really cool there's the thermo sealed not stitched stitches leak this bag is supposed to be waterproof so there you go hope you enjoyed that and a little of the backstory so everybody who watches these all my videos 90 percent of the time have a little backstory to it thanks for watching see you on the water